Good afternoon to you. Mark South of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for the 4th of July, Independence Day, 2019. Going to keep this fairly quick. There's a couple things I want to point out that are definitely worth discussing. First of all, in the eastern Pacific, of course, we have Category 3 Hurricane Barbara here. Still churning away out over the open water, not bothering anyone as it begins to weaken and lose its uh, presence in the atmosphere. It'll become a shallower system. Therefore, it'll start to be steered more by the lower level flow. And while it will turn westerly and be aimed at the general direction of the Hawaiian Islands, its impacts there will be negligible. Probably won't even notice it very much. Something to monitor. There could be an increase in some of the wave action, maybe uh, maybe some rain showers that come through here. Let's revisit this in a couple of days when we see how much structure remains of Barbara, but really no concern out that way. In the meantime, another system very likely to develop in the eastern Pacific, well off the coast of Mexico, and it too will stay, let's use a different color so it stands out a little bit, uh, well off the Mexican coast. We don't have any mechanisms to steer these systems up into Mexico proper just yet, which is good. That can change, though, once we get later in the season. Uh, right now, though, we have general high pressure in control out here in the general sense, and that keeps these systems from being able to turn north. Instead, they're generally steered off to the west and west-northwest with time south of a fairly potent subtropical ridge. Uh, here's a satellite animation. Barbara's still very well intact. Beautiful outflow pattern associated with it in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Slightly cooler sea surface temperatures and thus a more stable atmosphere and less energy for Barbara to work with. And that's why it, it is slowly weakening over time. Uh, you do see this other area, large area of disorganized convection and this will eventually become another tropical storm in the eastern Pacific and probably a hurricane at some point. And probably not going to bother anybody except shipping interests. So we'll get rid of that tab. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic Basin, a couple of things of note. You see here the intertropical convergent zone uh, straddling uh, just south of really the convection there of 10 degrees north latitude. But it has become a little bit more active as of late. A little bit more in the way of showers and thunderstorms flaring up along this area where the trades from the northern hemisphere meet the trades from the southern hemisphere. And you get this line of convergence or air coming together. Also looks like a little bit of a tropical wave with the shear very prevalent there going over the top of it. The shear is in the upper levels. The tropical waves here move along at the lower to mid levels against that shear. And that's what shears them apart. And you do have some moisture, though, coming in to parts of the Windward Islands here. I uh, would love to hear from you. If you're in that area, let me know what the weather is like. We talked about it the other day in terms of how warm the water temperatures were in this area, the oppressive heat, the humidity, the dew points, etc. Now you do have a little bit of shower and thunderstorm activity moving in. looks like Barbados, maybe one. It's hard to tell from this satellite perspective. Isn't Barbados, like, right in there? It's hard to see. This is pretty zoomed out. But uh, the Windward Islands definitely getting a little bit of this action. Uh, it's still very early, though. The very early part of July is you don't see development out this way very often at all. It can happen, but it's a very dry pattern. You can see this Saharan air layer even on this particular satellite image or series of images, as it were. The Saharan air layer, a dry, dominant, semi-permanent feature typically this time of the hurricane season, but once you get to later August, uh, the pressures out here begin to relax, and you have a less influence coming off of Africa in terms of the dry, stable air. We will have to watch some energy that is trying to gather up here, and I know you're saying, well, Mark, that's over the, the Midwest of the United States. You know, there are different ways to get tropical cyclones to develop. You can have tropical waves, old frontal boundaries, just an area of what's called a surface trough that will develop. Uh, upper level lows can sit around over warm water for enough amount of time. But sometimes you get these pieces of energy, these vortmaxes as we call them, 
And they'll come down off the continent over the water. Maybe they develop and head out to sea like that. Sometimes they will go down and the high will build in over the top of them and they'll turn and get over the gulf. Sometimes they come over and they drift this way. Think about Hurricane Danny in 1997, a very strong El Nino year, which this is not. But the point is, sometimes you do get these energy impulses over the United States, over North America, that will come off into a warm body of water and try to develop into a tropical cyclone. They are typically smaller in size, uh, fairly short-lived overall. You don't get to watch them for a week to ten days like we do when we see these systems develop out here over the deep tropics. So this will be something to watch. The models are starting to maybe shine a little bit of a light on the possibility that something might try to develop. In fact, if we look at the ECMWF, the European, as we call it, the Euro, this is this morning's run. It just finished a little while ago here. So we have the full uh, model here to look at, the full, well, I'm going to show you a week, basically. And uh, we're looking at the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere. Here's the United States. Outline it for you here. Good thing to do on this Independence Day. There's your United States outline. A little bit of earthquake activity in Southern California I've been reading about. I know nothing, well, I won't say I know nothing about geology, but that's definitely not my realm. I just thought I'd mention it as I was drawing my line across California. But the energy somewhere in here, watch what happens. This is the initial conditions. This is 24 hours out. This is 48 hours out. And this is 72 and let's, let's see, there it is right there, right here. So let me go back one more. That's 72, there's 48. We'll kind of draw this and play detective here. We're really reaching, okay? But I'm just showing you how these things start sometimes. Uh, that's 48, so 24 hours out. It looks like it's back here over northwest Missouri. So we can trace this energy. It comes south and east with time. Again, 24 here, 48. Get rid of my telestration. I think that'll help. Uh, 72 hours, right there, 96 hours, a little bit more defined now as it gets into east central Georgia, right there, and uh, finally at day 5, 120 hours, you see this front, and that's indicated by this vorticity, everything's kind of stretched out, leftover boundary in the atmosphere where the air can naturally come together, and you can see the shape of this troughiness in the atmosphere right here, you outlined the the wind barbs, and you can see that, and you lay this front across and drop that little piece of energy. Again, let's just go back one more time. This is how I do it. I'm showing you how I do this. All right, you watch the energy come down. There it is at day five, kind of hanging around in here somewhere. At day six, 144 hours, it starts to drop into the northeast gulf, at least according to this one model. And you can see there's a little bit of uh, cyclonic uh, turning in the wind barbs here, overall sitting right in there. You see that? I'm just verifying that I'm not making this up. I'm not seeing things. And finally, that's day six. So at day seven, oh, there it goes. It pops out uh, a little bit stronger in the vorticity field, bundling the energy, round in its appearance. These are all signs. These are your clues that we look for. This is how I do it. This is not necessarily how everybody looks for cyclogenesis. That's the fancy word for waiting and watching to see if something is going to develop. We call that tropical cyclogenesis. There's different ways you can do it. You can look at all kinds of pieces of the atmosphere, but I, and I've done this for the better part of 20 years, and the Internet makes it a lot easier, obviously, especially something like tropicaltidbits.com, which is where this graphic comes from. I like to look at the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere, which is about 5,000 feet up. It's my analogy of looking at an x-ray. And you want to see, or a CT scan, you know, what's going on inside, you know, beyond the cloud cover or whatever. And this shows us something kind of interesting in about a week. So this just tells me, look closer each day going forward. Now we begin the 24-hour cycle of the models. Yeah, 24 hours is fine right now. Let's revisit this tomorrow. So early tomorrow afternoon, I'll do an update, uh, probably before the 12Z Euro comes out. 
because I've got some testing I need to do tomorrow afternoon. I'll talk about that in tomorrow's update. But let's just take a look at what this does over the next couple of days. I'll do an update tomorrow. Uh, we'll see if this is still there. You know, one run of the GFS and the Euro had it over here off the Carolinas, and then it went out to sea. So let's see. Let's see how this evolves. This is sort of your first, it's got my attention kind of thing. And there's nothing else happening, so we might as well watch it. And also, as my good friend Steve mentioned on Twitter to me earlier today, uh, Michael Lowry uh, posted this about the Western Atlantic, that overall the Western Atlantic is the third warmest in the modern satellite era at about 82.28 is the average temperature here in the Western Atlantic. Uh, you know, again, I mentioned this the other day, your tropical waves can come off Africa, and if they don't develop here or over here, but then they blossom over here, and then they get over to all this warm water, you don't need me to tell you that you can have some troubling outcomes when and if that happens. And so I bring this up because this little impulse up here, if it comes down into the Gulf, yes, the water temperatures are quite warm, warmer than they should be by a yeah, pretty good margin, a couple of degrees Fahrenheit maybe, a couple of Celsius, whatever. It's warmer than it should be. It's hurricane season. We should be paying attention anyway. I'm just reminding you of such. So we'll watch and see what happens. I'll talk about it some more tomorrow. All right, that's it. Nothing else for me today. Have a great rest of your 4th of July. Please be careful out there. When you come back and watch tomorrow's update, I want you to have all of the fingers and toes that you had today. And I want you to have both of your eyes Maybe you only have one eye already, but I want you to have whatever you started with today. I don't mean to laugh, but you get the idea. Stay safe. That's the dad and me talking, but it's 4th of July. we got some fireworks that people are going to launch and so forth, so be careful out there. Seriously, I care about you. Do have fun, though. That's the other important part. Celebrate our Independence Day, but do so responsibly. All right? I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. From whatever device you happen to do so on, I much appreciate it. We'll talk some more early tomorrow afternoon.